I'm Sonia. I'm Abong. And I'm Kate. And today we are dishing with you from the New Mexico Avenue location of Chef Jeff's, located at 3201 New Mexico Avenue. And we're going to get into all of this colorful food. Colorful. No, nice. Uh, <laughs> speaking nice. of which, very good segue. Speaking of which, our guest today is Vincent Orange, who's a candidate for council, uh, uh, council chair. chair. So that's, this is awesome. I mean, I've seen your, I've seen your, uh, your, your posters all over the place, and I've always been interested. Your headquarters. I mean, I've always been, been very interested in, in what you're, uh, what you're trying to do. So, what is your, what's your main uh, interesting platform for the city now? Well, the main interesting platform for the city is really getting our residents back to work, improving our neighborhoods and our schools, and then tackling those tough financial challenges that we'll be facing. The fact of the matter is, when I left the council in 2007, we left them with a 1.6 billion dollar basically savings account, and now we're down to about 600 million dollars. They're looking at a deficit next year, so it could all be wiped out, and we could possibly have the financial control back, control board back in our future. And I'm here to stop that from happening. Why do you think that we had uh, the, the shortfall or the potential shortfall or the, the deficit approaching? Well, why do you think that is? Well, it's a combination of things. One is the economy; the economy was bad, and then uh, secondly. It's just uh, you know mismanagement. Uh, the local opinion editor from the Washington Examiner she did a piece that indicated there was 740 million dollars of fraud, waste, and abuse. So we just need to get some more some strong professionals back on the council. You know those CPAs like yourself and those attorneys and those that are really going to look at this from a professional point of view and get us back on track so we can continue uh, you know having a good time and having a great quality of life here in the nation's capital. Now you you mentioned that you are really focused on jobs and I think that's very important to be focused on in the District of Columbia. How do you think being council chairman you can do a lot to help us with you know, our job crisis that we have? Well, it's basically through economic development and for me I have a record. I've created thousands of jobs. When I was the council member for Ward 5, uh, I was the first one to bring a major economic development project to the city in 20 years. Home Depot, Giant, A.J. Wright, Bank of America, and all that produces jobs. And then we connected those uh, establishments with folks that live directly across the street. Now they walk across the street and go to work. I uh, had opportunities to secure legislation that created the 10,000 summer jobs at a $20 million budget. Now now we, we try to provide 25,000. We yeah. blew the budget, so we can't do that. But it's just managing it and making sure that you're able to connect education to employment to the economic development that's taking place in the city. Every time we hear something about the history of Washington or where we were as a city, there's, the word mismanagement always comes up. So how do we move forward and how do we really cut that word out of what Washington is really becoming. It's, be, it's changed so much the city in the last decade. How do we get the word mismanagement out of our vocabulary and really pick up steam as a city? And I, I think we just get back to the fundamentals. You know, when I came into office with Mary Williams and Linda Crop back in 1999, we had a $518 million deficit, junk bond status, financial control board. We all got together and we worked hard to make sure that we rid ourselves of the control board, making sure that we planned. We knew the economy was going to change put together a, a book it was called the economic resurgence of Washington DC citizens plan for prosperity had action items and we all followed that plan so it's all about having a good plan and then executing the plan to make sure at the end of the day you're able to achieve what you set out to do and right now uh, I think the city's doing extremely well in terms of you know that that period bring us from the, the brink of destruction to where we are we just want to make sure that we tweak it a little bit and keep moving forward because you really can't have a great quality of life in the District of Columbia, but you just have to make sure you bring everyone along. And how does statehood fit into that? Statehood is, is the ultimate goal, and clearly we want to have uh, you know a, a voice in Congress. We like to have our two senators and, and a representative uh, to rep to really represent District Columbia. Is that comparative to the success of the city? Yeah, I, really, I, is it? I think it is overall. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. Uh, now, obviously, we can do well financially. We can do well by enjoying great restaurants, improving our schools, making sure that our children get a high school diploma that, that speaks of value, that our children are ready for college or the job market or business opportunities. That, that would be a great success story, making sure that economic development is doing well and everybody's brought along. But ultimately, we want our children to be able to have a dream. If I want my, if our children, your children should be able to wake up one day and say, you know what, I think I want to be a senator representing New Columbia. Just like the kid in Maryland can wake up in the morning and say, hey, I want to be a senator from Maryland. So we all should be able to have the same dreams and desires, and that's why ultimately statehood will be the ultimate achievement.
Let's talk about the dreams of those school children. Our school system has been something that's been talked about in papers across the nation. You know, what do you think is what do you think is happening there, and what should be happening there? Well, I, I think uh, you know, the school system is, is moving along well, especially now that we have executed the contract with the Washington Teachers Union. The teachers are going to receive a 21 percent increase, or 140 million dollars over the next four years. Uh, now you have a, a you know a basic objective: pay for performance. The children must do well in school in order for you to continue teaching in this environment. So uh, now that we have that in place, now it's just full speed ahead with, you know, with educational reform. Where did your children go to school? Uh, my children started out in public schools. Uh, all three of them went to Bunker Hill Elementary School. Then uh, one of my children went to Deal. One of them went to uh, Hardy Middle School. Ultimately, they all went to St. John's College High School. And now my two sons are graduates from Morehouse College. I have one son that's now in the graduate program at GW. And my daughter's 14, and uh, she's moving right along. <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah. But, but more importantly, I would say my, my wife is a school teacher in the D.C. public school system, has been there in excess of 25 years. And I think she has a very tough job because she's in special education, and she goes and deals with the most severely developmentally disabled population. So how do you, I'm sure you get a lot of questions about that, having your children go to a high school that is a, pub, a private high school, but you have a, a spouse who works in the school district. So. How do you square that? How did you make that decision to send your children to a private school when... Well, you know, actually, I didn't make the decision. Um, my son, Vincent Jr., made, made the decision. He and his friends, when they, got, when they graduated from Bunker Hill Elementary School, they wanted to go to the St. John's. And so I provided him an opportunity, got him a summer job. He made money. And actually, he, he contributed to, to his education. Now, my own personal background is I come from a very uh, poor background, seven sisters, two brothers. My parents were divorced. I came through public schools, but when I hit the ninth grade, Ms. P uh, Palavin and Ms. Pasolio introduced me to a program called a better chance and it was to go to a private boarding school however in order to go there I had to go to Carlton College so they could ascertain whether or not I had an educational foundation to do well in that particular environment so it was the public schools that gave me that foundation and that's why I'm so keen on making sure that our children get a strong public school education foundation be it charter school private school whatever the bottom line is a child must be able to read independently upon entering the fourth grade must be able to add subtract multiply and divide upon entering the fourth grade or they will have trouble with the rest of the curriculum but the last question we have to ask you since we are in a race for the mayor too uh -oh. here is how will, the, how will the council chairman how should the council chairman work with the mayor whoever that happens to be are you a check on the mayor are you hoping to work closely hand in hand with the mayor how what well, would it's, you? it's a combination of, of what you just said is obviously our entire system is based on checks and balances that's the reason why the mayor runs the executive branch the chairman runs the legislative branch and then we have an independent chief financial officer so when those three are working together and collaborating building consensus the city works well and the classic example was mayor williams uh, Linda Crop, Chairman Crop, and uh, Dr. Gandhi. When they work together, the city works well. So that's what we have to get back. As chairman, I plan to have uh, a consensus building attitude. I plan to work extremely close with the mayor, and I plan for us to collectively put our heads together and make sure that we are providing a good basis for everyone to have a good quality of life in the District of Columbia. Well, you should be able to live, work, play, entertain, that's what we're enjoy all about. yourself, living, go to sporting events. In the yeah, let's Thanks do that. so much for coming on with us. We wish you all of the best in your bid for council chairman, Vincent Orange. Thank you so you much. heard from him here first. Come back and check us out right here next time. <laughs> we won't be with Vincent Orange, but you'll see who we are edition with right here orange. on the District Dish. <laughs>